What is up guys, in today's video I wanted to talk about what my EDC or my everyday carry is and why I chose it. Just to preface uh, a little bit of uh, what today's video is in regards to, we did a poll last week on our Instagram page, which if you don't follow, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Uh, on essentially what everyone carries, right? We have a small following of uh, EDCers, right? People that take concealed carry seriously and uh, kind of asked around what people carry, why they carry it, uh, why they chose it, etc., etc. So I kind of just want to come on here and kind of share my thoughts and um, just kind of show what I carry and why I carry it. So my current EDC is this Glock 19, it's a Gen 5. Um, I'll briefly go over uh, kind of what the package is and kind of give you a breakdown a little step by step. Usually, most of the time, I carry in our own gear, right? Uh, Garden Arms, we're a small uh, manufacturing company. We do Kydex gear and other stuff. So holsters, uh, mag carriers, uh, tourniquet carriers, handcuff carriers. Uh, we also do Cerakoting and stippling, but we can talk about that in a later episode. I'm a big believer in kind of exploring the market and see what's out there so that we can make our stuff as best as we can. Uh, so I went out actually and purchased a T-Rex Arms Sidecar 2.0. This is their newest model with the uh, with the hinge or the flex here, where you can uh, it has a modular mag system, so to speak. So you can swap this out for uh, an AR mag, a tourniquet carrier, a uh, bunch of options. Um, so I'm currently carrying, like I said, my Gen 5 19 in this T-Rex Arms Sidecar 2.0. I'll go ahead and pull it out here and kind of show you what we're working with. Uh, just for you safety nuts out there, uh, like myself, no magazine in the firearm itself, nothing in the barrel, pipe, head, whatever you want to go about calling it. So this is it right here, essentially. Uh, it's pretty basic, but it's also not that basic. Uh, start off as a Gen 5 19, like I've said. Um, put a magwell, a light, slide, extended mag release here and an optic uh, i'll quickly go over the reasoning behind kind of each upgrade uh, so we'll start from the butt up or the bottom up so the first thing you'll notice is this mag well this is a and i'll try to show you as best i can uh, hopefully you can see that so if you can't see it i apologize but it is a zev tech I believe it's the Pro Compact model. It's an aluminum magwell for uh, pretty much any Glock. They do a bunch of options. They do race magwells, compacts, pros. This is, again, I think it's the Pro Compact version. Uh, kind of some, some background on why I went ahead and, and purchased that. It was actually my first purchase for this. I have rather large hands, rather meaty hands. And without this, uh, I'm not sure if anybody else experiences this, but uh, when I would, you know, get a grip on the firearm, my pinky, as you can kind of see there, would kind of hang off a little bit or just barely be on the edge. Um, and for me personally, having the option to have a magwell and kind of squeeze my hand up into the firearm, right? Like it gives me a pretty tight squeeze here. Uh, I figured might as well. It's a little pricey. I think it runs like depending on where and when you buy it. It runs around 80 bucks or so, um, but it gives you, at least myself, a super tight grip on it, uh, which obviously helps with everything you're trying to do with the firearm itself. Um, so again, a little pricey, but definitely worth the pickup. Moving on up, uh, most of you guys, or a lot of you have seen this. It's a uh, Streamlight TLR1 HL, the high lumen model. Uh, I believe the non-HL is, don't quote me, it's 500 lumens. Uh, this is the 1000 lumen model. Both share the same footprint, uh, and I think they're relatively the same price as well. So I figured, why not, right? You can double the output for literally no extra cost in terms of money or footprint, right? Um, hell of a light, plenty of output. It has, I'll try not to blind it here, so it has a... Uh, just regular on off, as you can kind of see there. Hopefully it's not too blinding. And then if you hit it twice, if you actually actuate it twice, excuse, excuse me, uh, you get the strobe function. Um, it's pretty nifty. 
Uh, again, I have rather large hands, so actually actuating and getting to the switch with either my main hand or my off hand is uh, pretty, pretty nice and simple, honestly. Uh, then moving on from there, I have a Cogworks extended slide release. Uh, the cool thing about this is, uh, and just a background of why I went about purchasing it, Again, I have large hands. When I grip the firearm, at least, I ride because of my hand size, and obviously the way I grip the firearm, my hand tends to run pretty high, and I'm trying to show you, let me shift my body. It runs pretty high on the slide, as you can kind of see there, hopefully. So what happened is, as the gun is cycling, with the uh, factory or the OBM slide release, it would essentially get pushed up just the slightest bit, and then the slide would lock to the rear uh, when it wasn't supposed to lock to the rear, obviously. So this is pretty neat. Uh, I think it runs like 59 or 54 bucks. I'll try to give you a rough idea of what everything costs here, uh, just for some perspective. Um, it runs about 54 bucks, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it puts the slide release up and out uh, or up and away from your thumb or your support hand, right? Depending on if you're, if you're a righty or a lefty. I'm obviously wrong-handed. I'm left-handed, unfortunately. Um, so I think it's one of the most important things on my actual EDC, just being able to, you know, not have to worry about side lock uh, and the ease of having it right at your thumb. Uh, after that, we have a Steel City Arsenal. I believe this is the ultralight slide. Um, I can, I'll double check that, but I'll try to get a little close up here for you. It's got cuts on the side, on the top, and on the other side. So, triple cuts. Um, you can get your barrel ported by like someone like Monsum Tactical, um, or even buy an aftermarket just ported barrel itself if you'd like to give you that, uh, that little extra oomph uh, when firing, right? It's a, it's a nice little touch. Um, this was, I, I, okay, don't quote me, it was about 280 bucks, which is pretty affordable for a slide. Most companies will run you mid threes, mid fours, at least from what I've seen. And then after the slide on that, we have a Hollow Sun. This is actually the 407K, not the 507K. Um, the 507 was running around 350 at the time when I was, uh, looking to purchase the optic obviously uh this one ran me i actually bought it used weirdly enough off facebook marketplace uh for 200 bucks so 150 bucks less than the 507 uh, i think the only thing you really lose is the shake awake uh, function uh, and i think a little bit of battery life i think the 507 has a, a upgraded uh longer supported battery life in general um, I think it's like a 10,000 hour difference, but in retrospect, you might not even feel it anyways. I change it out. I, I try to change my batteries out every six months or so, uh, just to be extra safe. Um, so like, will we, will I actually ever get to the 50,000 hours? Probably not. Um, so again, 150 bucks less, essentially the same optic. This is actually the red dot version. And then from there, obviously we just have factory uh, or OEM Glock sights. Um, as I'm sure you've seen or known or, or heard for that matter, not the best sights, right? They're kind of, uh, they're just not the best, right? They're double white. So white bar, a white U on the back, white notched, and then a white front post as well. Except with the optic, they don't coat witness. So there's really, they're just for uh, some kind of reference point in case the optic will f would fail. Um, that's pretty much a quick overview of uh, what this thing is. Uh, so why, how did I actually end up with the 19? So before I picked up the Gen 5 19, I actually had a Glock 48 MOS, which I no longer what I have with me. I actually gifted that to my brother uh, for Christmas last year. He's been uh, kind of drooling over it for the past couple months. Uh, he had a 19X, it was a little bit too big for him to carry. Uh, so I ended up building a 48 MOS uh, as much as I possibly could. 
uh, or as much as I like to build my guns, uh, mostly just external upgrades. I tend to leave internals the same uh, or factory, uh, except for the barrel sometimes, right? Having a threaded barrel or a comp uh, can be nice. So I went ahead and upgraded that. I put a TLR, TLR7 sub on it, uh, a 407K. I might have even misspoken. This is a 407C. Uh, just had a light bulb go off in my head. So this is the 407C, not the 407K. The K is the subcompact models. Um, had a mangle on it, had a trigger, had a bar on the inside. Uh, it was pretty much uh, the best little 40 MOS you could build. But why do I even mention it? In my personal opinion, this is to each their own, obviously. I believe the 48 or the Glock 48 MOS specifically uh, is the best concealed carry firearm currently on the market. Uh, that's very subjective, of course. Uh, it, everyone has their own opinion on what's what, what they prefer, uh, what fits them the best. I've always been a Glock guy. Um, the reason I started with Glocks, truthfully, just the grip angle for me. I've shot SIGs, I've shot 1911s, I've shot uh, a bunch of, bunch of options out there, staccatos for that matter. Uh, and the grip angle of a Glock always just felt the most natural to me when you go to present. It always just tends to fall right where I need it to without too much adjustment, obviously. But the issue I would run into, even though the 40 MOS had an optic, had a light, had a magwell, uh, had the capacity of a Glock 19, essentially, uh, with the shield, arm, shield arms max. For me, the biggest downfall was thickness, right? Frame thickness uh, or grip size. Like I mentioned, I have rather large hands. So the 48 MOS always felt a little bit too skinny for me. I felt like my fingers kind of overlapped too much when presenting the firearm. So it made me a little bit uncomfortable with presentation, dry fire, range, uh, range days, excuse me, um, taking classes. It just, I never felt fully in control of it uh, just because it was a little bit too skinny for me. And essentially, uh, for those of you that don't know, the 48 MOS is essentially a Glock 19 that lost some weight. It has the same slide dimension in terms of length. So same slide length, same grip length as a 19, just skinnier, more compact. Naturally, this felt like the next best thing. Next best thing? Yep, next best thing. Because <laughs> I kept the same form factor, essentially, right? The sight radius, grip length, but it added a slight thickness to it to where now when I do present this thing and grip this thing, it feels like nothing's, nothing's taking this thing out of my hands, uh, which I feel is pretty important for myself. And then along with that, the 19's been out for significantly longer than something like the 48 MOS or the 48 for that matter. Uh, so aftermarket support is substantially more than the 48. Uh, so you have more options for slides, for optics, for, you know, slide releases, lights, MacWells, triggers, etc., etc., etc. As most of you know, Glocks have uh, a stupendous amount of aftermarket support, which, which can be a good and a bad thing because there are some duds out there. Some things that I've purchased have been kind of a regret purchase, and I think we all go through that. I also want to touch on my current holster that... I purchased just for comparison's sake and testing. This T-Rex Sidecar 2.0 with the flex in the middle or the hinge as some call it. Man, so far, uh, it's been pretty phenomenal. Uh, hugs the gun extremely well. The flex in the middle uh, is pretty much a game changer. And the thing I'm a biggest fan of is actually the modularity of the actual holster itself. Being able to take off this pistol mag carrier uh, and slap on something like a tourniquet carrier. For those of you that don't carry a tourniquet, shame on you. Everyone should, in my personal opinion, of course. And being able to shift this up and down depending on what you're carrying, uh, what pistol mag you're carrying, uh, the arm mag, etc. right? There's different size pistol mags. Uh, like this is a, actually a Glock 17 mag, as you can see here. I'll try to kind of give you a comparison. That's a Glock 17 mag, it's a Glock 19 mag. Uh, get extra two rounds out of this opposed to this. So what I, I like to do, I like to ride this, or set this one step down from what it usually is, and then insert a Glock 17 mag to give me somewhat of a flush fit here. 
I felt that if I put a 19 mag, it rolled a little bit too deep into my pants. Uh, and when going to right, grab for it during a reload, I had a little bit of struggle kind of clearing this with my belt and pants. Uh, so this solved that uh, pretty easily. So that's that. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Feel free to comment down below what you think. Let me know what you carry as well. If you have any questions on my actual, on the actual Glock itself and what's what's on here, or if you have any recommendations on what else I should do to it. I do have something coming for it in the next week or so. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell and stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll do some testing on it as soon as it comes in as well. I think it'd be pretty cool to compare before and after. I don't wanna spoil too much, so I'll just keep it at that. Hope you guys enjoyed. It's been a pretty short video, pretty quick overview of you know, what my EEC is. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Again, appreciate all the support. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, sub, Lord have mercy, subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell so you know when the next video comes in for the little surprise that's hopefully coming this week. Uh, that's what I was told. And uh, that's it, guys. Cheers. I'll see you next week. <laughs>